Good day. Today, we want to thank you so much for uh, purchasing or trusting Mechanical Transplanter in our, your planning needs. Uh, in this video, we'll be showing how to set up a 912 slash 948, getting it ready to go to the field. For the different various parts, of course, you have your 948 unit. It's a little bit longer than 912. We have uh, parts to go with it, separate boxes, of course, shade frame, barrel mounts if you have water, and miscellaneous parts. Behind you here, we have the drive systems, each one individually, the 948 drive with the gauge wheel, the toolbars for setting it up. Every machine comes with a tool, dual toolbar setup arrangement. So if you want to offset your unit, it doesn't get in the way of your A-frames or other issues. Various bags of hardware. This is your drive hardware bag. Your unit mounting hardware bag. This is for water kit, if you ordered a water kit system. And this is your pipe stands or parking stand bag. This is your set ahead U-bolts and nuts and washers for your shelving tray and for your A-frame. The tools needed to install this equipment, 7 16 wrench, half inch, pair of 9 16 wrenches, 3 quarter, 15 16 sockets in correlation with your different wrenches, a 15 16 socket, inch and an eighth, inch and five sixteenths, inch and a half sockets, inch and a half or eighth inch Allen set, and a three sixteenths. Tape measure and a marking device. Okay, first off we need to do is determine what you're going to have for your wheel centers. Generally they're 60 inch centers. What we do is we mark out our bar, find our center, Today we're going to be setting this up on a six foot bar. Normally it's an eight foot bar. So we're looking at six foot, half of that is 36. And since we're just going, again, 60 inch roll centers for, for dry centers, okay, we want to add 30 inches, 30 inches to that, so we're going to go up to 66. This would be our center of our drive. And then, Take away 30 inches of that, that puts us down to 6, and that will be the center of our gauge wheel. The front bar we're going to lay out for our A frame. Again, same aspect. Find our center, which again is 36. But in this case, we're going to do our drops. For cap 1 or category 1 A frames, it's 26. So 26 would be 13. We'll take it to 26, 23, sorry about that, 23, add 13, would be 49. That'd be your locations of your drops. If you include a water barrel system, you're going to be 22 inches, off, or 22 inches total, so 11 inches off center. So we're going to add that now since we have a barrel kit. So 47. That's going to be the center of your upright where your barrel is going to rest on. And we'll take away 11 here. So we're at 25. Okay. Our next step is getting a suitable stand set up. We have certain stands for ourselves. So if you want to make something or come up with something, ideal height for setting the equipment. We're looking at around 19 inches off the ground. Get our unit bar. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, I found in our instruction manual, we have it set up as your bar and your drive system. The easiest way I found out setting these machines up is putting our unit on first, then loading our drive system. What we have is a nice little lift cradle, but you can use chains to uh, straddle the four corners. Now, if you notice on this machine, I don't think you can see it or not, but we have three pipe stands installed right now. That is only for shipping purposes. When you go, you have two in the back. I'm going to point this out now if I forget. Two in the back, one here in the front. When we get ready to put this on this bar, we're going to remove this front one and the one opposite where you plan on putting your right around. So it'll be something where he doesn't have to trip over later when he's getting on and getting off the machine. Okay, with our marks we made earlier, Again, let's say if you plan on offsetting the machine, you put your mark on there. But we're going to take our center here. And we're going to line it up with the point of our pocket. Then we're going to go for a unit bag. two, three quarter and shoe bolts, four nuts, and four lock washers. Leave loose, don't check our center. And secure it. Draw it slowly.
We can lower it down and move our Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to loosen the bearings on that shaft and also on our clamp. We snug them up for shipping for possible, you know, if it vibrate loose or whatever. So again, this is where you need two wrenches to get in here because there's crockets in the way. This is for alignment purposes for your drive. Do the same on this side. over until we get our set screws up. Okay. Next thing we're going to install is one half of our drive coupler. This is a hex shaft so we don't have to worry about any key stocks or anything like that. And the set screw that I just used was an eighth inch Allen wrench, so that's the same on these couplers too. So we slide the coupler on until it's flush, then to the shaft. And it's secure. You don't want to back it up too far if you have water because you can damage your water trips. You can go back a little bit if you feel resistance, then stop with it. Okay. So our next step is we're going to slide our shaft towards the outer side of the unit to clear for uh, mounting our drive system. Secure the drive system again with our unit bag and our drive. You have four red securing plates, two for the drive, and two for the gauge wheel. You have eight, five eighths by six. Exit bolts, four for each side. X nuts. Lock washers. Okay. socket and wrench. You can back the jack off. I'm going to extend it. Remove your guard to expose the mounting plates for your drive. Okay. 
here on the ground, I'm going to install my other half of my coupler. Now make sure you install it on the right side when you go to bring this up here. So if you're putting on, again, you drive on your right side, your plate would be on the outside here. That'd be a good reference. Again, flush. When my flush is on this inside here of the coupler. So what I do, the mark that you made earlier on your bar is going to split your drive. You see our stands in the way, so this is where you're going to play the game of moving it around off and on. So what I do is I load the bolts into the plates. We can go either way. You can load the, the, the bolts in the drive and pull it out. Or I like, I like hiding the fast so, so I lift it up. This is where two people would make it handy, but one can do it. See how that plate is right now, it's not against the bar. I'm going to bring my drive down and that's going to close my gap for me. It's like that. Supposed to be more here in a few seconds. I can bring it down more. Now we're even. Okay, now to load the other side. Okay, if you look again, where we did our mark, the jack is the center of our drive system. So you can use that as your reference of your center of your wheel. So you slide that over. Until we're in the center. And then just, again, same thing. Snug these up. This one's here a little tricky, so you might need an extension. We're trying to get past that ear package. Or you can just tighten up on the back side. Also known as a spider. We're going to need our Allen wrench and our two nice 16 wrenches again. 
Okay, install the spider on one side. Now we're gonna have some tension on our uh, bar now because the, the, the chain is pulling on the unit. So a rubber mallet or a block of wood and a steel mallet can be used to knock the shaft open. Okay, as we get close. close. See how that's the tension of the chain tightener is going to pull on that shaft. Okay, so then what we do now, since we're tight there, now we're going to tighten our bearings back up. Okay, now those are tight. Now we're going to take our 3 16 Allen's head, but well, we're going to line our chain up, our sprocket wise, and we're going to tighten that set screw. Slide over our dirt reflector and then tighten the collar up. Okay, at this time we're going to reinstall our guard.
Okay, now we move over to the gate door side. Again, we're probably over a stand. Now this here, we can't go off the jack. We actually have to go off the center of our wheel because the jack is offset. So we do the same thing again. Motor plates. Center our wheel with our mark. Next thing we're going to do is going to install our set of heads, which are on this cart here. We have three of them. Here we're just going to leave loose right now until we get the other bar in place. And once it's there, then we'll snug them up slowly and then tighten them to stay. Ask me how that got in there. <laughs> but you don't need it. I want to make sure too, because I put this set ahead on here without double checking to make sure it's not going to interfere with my drop or my uh, barrel bump, which it won't because my drop is going to be right here. 
No, right here. This is my drop. So we have more enough for them. But I can spread out the, the cat to hitch also. But that's what you're running. Now they go tight against this the existing brackets. One, and make sure you have good alignment and also locks everything on. Can you do this, set up the second bar one of two ways. Uh, set up another set of stands or way of holding it. Or we could feed our U-bolts in and then just feed our toolbar through the U-bolts. Either way works. What I'm gonna do is set up another set of stands. And going off the bar with the center mark, you should know that you're in alignment with the other bar. So again. So the U bolts are a little tight. This is an inch and eighth wrench, or if you have a ratchet, a socket works just as well. What I'm do is I'm start my center one. Make sure I'm on my line. I'm just going to 
have this one up right now. I'm just working on my unit bar right now, and then I'll have to, have to slide my old one feet away to make sure it's centered. Okay, I'm going to double check my center one and move it where it needs to be. We should be even on our bars. Okay, now we can snug this one up. Once this one's tight, then we can go back through and just tighten everything else back up. Installed our pipe stand that we removed earlier from the unit where it can support itself. By doing that, in the pipe stand brackets, we're going to get our bag, which is this one right here. These are four 5844s or 4x4 four four U bolts. I can load the U-bolts. Four lock washers and four nuts. Okay. I'm gonna take my pipe stand I took off earlier. Load it into the holder. Slide under the bar and do the same with this one. These here could be slid anywhere if you want them tight against the plates to add more 
you know, less chances for the rock, or you can just leave them on the ends. on his legs. Now we're going to install the A-frame. Two 7844s. Four one by six and a half. Two hitch pins in the bag, some nuts, washers, your hitch pins, and also one set eight by five with a spacer for your upright. First thing to do is install my upright, or my spacer for my upright. That goes in this back hole here. You see the two, that's gonna be for your third arm. Slide. It helps we don't have a rolling cart, but and up the hole. And this here you're just gonna leave loose for right now. After assembling the two halves. Now we're going to place it on our front toolbar. Get it fairly close to center. Then we're going to secure that with two 7844s. Lock washers and nuts. We're going to tighten up our spacer bolt. That takes a 1 by 16 socket, wrenches, or both, whatever you have. We're going to tighten up slowly. Okay, well, that's tight. Consider your A-frame. And you want to tighten these in a cross position. I mean by that is front here. 
the back here. Go to the front here. Now we're going to install our drops. That takes again four one by six and a half uh, hex head bolts, nuts, and this would be a one and a half inch socket and wrench. Notice on the drops. You have a large space up top here. This goes to the top of the faces up. And one large Carrying plate. Feed the bolts through the drop. And that goes on your mark, which you made earlier. Draw these up evenly. Touch the top. A little bit. Next, we're going to install our hitch pins. We've got three different locations here, depending on the height of your tractor, your uh, lower lengths, that is. Okay, next, we're going to install our barrel mounts. They're set up as lefts and rights, but they can be interchanged whatever direction you need to, to be able to make sure that you clear your uh, brackets. We need our pheromone bag, which is two 3444s and four X nuts and lock washers. Like the four is with our mark here, this is where our barrel mount is going to be, okay? So, for me to get that, it definitely can't go that way. So now my right now becomes my left. That's what I mean by that is what side that flange comes off of the tubing.
like I said before, some of these bolts are fairly snug, but they will go. And you secure these or tighten them with an inch and an eighth either socket or wrench. And you put the barrel on our hoops. If you notice on here, we have numbers on it of telling you where your gallons are. So I mean, if you want to put these towards the rider or you want them on the back side, that's your choice. So what we do now, we're going to install the pipe nipple or hose bar that lets us we'll put our, like our hose toward the tank. That is secured by, a, or tightened up with an inch and an eighth wrench or Whatever you have, it's close to it. Now you don't want to go tight, tight because you can break them off. We just want to snug it up. Spin that to the bottom. And these are your barrel straps, the J bolts. Like doing is wrapping that U on that J towards the barrel itself so you don't have a sharp edge that could possibly hit your barrel. And on our strap, we have a single hole here and three on this end. We're depending on, like, so if you get this for a different barrel. A little bit of adjustment. On this one here, you'll actually go in a center hole. And then repeat. So when you First time you use a barrel, what you want to do is you want to leave these loose and then fill it up with your mixture, water or fertilizer mixture, whatever you have. Then, then you'll end up tightening your J bolts. If you have it too tight before you fill it up, you can cause it to expand too much and it will split the seam right along where that strap is. Okay, now we're going to install our hose. Hose my bob. We said the hose is a little bit long. I mean, if you want to cut it short, if you like. But this way here, you make sure you have enough flex with your bar and whatnot. But if you feel it, again, if it's too long for you, just cut off the length that you want. You can tie it with, tighten it either with a flat blade screwdriver, screwdriver or a 5 16 wrench.
Okay, next we're going to install our side arm. This is where you'll put your seat on, you'll put on your footrest, and also your plant management system. On this uh, option here, or on the standard option, we have what we call the shelving system. But you can put plant boxes on it, you can put a uh, four tray, six tray carousel system on if you'd like. Well, you bolts we need for that, we go back to our original unit bag. Use 5824s. And lock washers. And okay, so this here takes 15 sixteenths. Now, the location of the sidearm depends on if you like have a left hand feeder or right hand feeder, where it's more comfortable, you want either side of your bar, and how close you want it to your unit. Here we're going to set it up for a right hand operator. Again, like I say, if you have an operator who's more comfortable using the left hand, then just place it on the other side. the same thing that we've been doing before. Just snug it just a little bit. Ground up even. Now we're going to install our green seat bracket. This is fully adjustable up and down. Again, rider's comfort. Two half inch crown lock nuts, two flat washers, and two 728 U bolts, or one 728 U bolt, sorry about that. More like setting it up for just a rough point is right in line with our unit here. If you look on... So it gives a nice, nice little reach there. Again, however you want for height. Secure that with a three quarter inch, or tighten, <laughs> with a three quarter inch socket or wrench. Next, I'm going to install my seat. This is a standard fiberglass seat. You can also order cushion. I already have my bracket on here. Generally, when we pack these up, we already have it bolted on. But if you don't, you secure it with four quarter inch flange 
hex nuts. So ready to place your half by one and a half inch carriage bolt into the bracket slot. Through the slot on your green seat bracket. Lap washer and nut. Again, this is fully adjustable, side to side, back to back, however, whatever makes it easier for the operator. And then tighten. If you tip it back, it will lock that square into that slot, so it will tighten it up. Otherwise, the, the square comes up with a being a, a Lock nut, it'll just keep spinning uh, your bolt. Next thing we're going to install is a foot rest. Get one U bolt, two flat washers, and two nut. Now, this could be installed either on the inside or outside. Right now, let's say we have a tight setup. Because you have roll spacing, which a lot of them are standard are 60 inches. Now again, the same thing, this is adjustable, up and down, front and back. We're just gonna put it all the way down for right now, and then you can adjust it to again for rider's comfort. Again, front and back. Okay, in your structure manual book that we have, we have a traction pad. That we can install. Get the back off, okay. The next bracket we're going to install is a carousel mounting bracket. Same thing. Two nuts, two flat washers, you bolt. This again can be installed either direction. We'll put it on the outside. It makes it easier just to tighten up here. Now, extra bolt inside. We want to get the, the shelving system over towards more of the center of the unit. And again, this here, then we can slide it back and forth for, again, easy access or for the operator. is a carousel upright. Now again, like I said, this here will receive both the plant box arrangement, uh, shelving system, or uh, four tray, six tray carousel, depending on what you uh, are planting with. I got that little bit lean in, so let me straighten it up a little bit.
Okay. And what I put this on was with 5 eighths by 3 and a half, flat washers, and lock washer in between. Again, this here can be moved however to make it easy for the operator. Now we're just going to set it there, and we'll do a final adjustment after we can set the rider on it. The next thing we're going to install is your carousel pipe. In the bag that came with the wings, you have one collar, four half by one and a quarter carriage bolts, four nuts, four lock washers, or four flat washers, and a set screw. Okay? What this does, when we set this in here, this is actually what tightens it up to keep it from turning. Now if you have a carousel, there would be a plastic bolt to come with it to add as a brake before you can spin it. So then we'll set our collar down on here. Collar is 16 French. Snug it up. And then 9 sixteenths wrench to tighten that. Now you can adjust this up and down more if you feel that when you set your wings up they're too high, you can A, lower this down, or again, just like say, adjust your wings. But you want to have clearance for your plants, so you might just have to move your pipe up and down a little bit, get that adjustment. Okay, now we're going to install our wings. Okay, we have an angle on the wings. Okay, so that's the angle's going to be facing the, the rider. So again, this is all rider comfort. Or if you want it down, like I say, wherever you want to adjust it. But like I said, once you got it set, if you need to raise and lower your pipe, then you can at that time. Again, sub 16th wrench. Like I said, you can, when you go set your second wing, or you that, you can measure it again, like your plant height, and then again, set it to wherever you have good clearance and also comfort. Next, we're going to install a shelving. And if I want a quarter, careful, flat washer, and not. Towards the rider, keep your trays from sliding out. And like I said, right now I'm just going to set them on there, and I'll come back and tighten them all up once they're. Then go back and tighten them all. This uh, video helps you out and uh, answers any questions you may have. And again, thanks for uh, purchasing our product.